Hi, hello, welcome to the episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is September the 16th, 2023. Hope this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Another, sex, another successful laundry run. Uh, it was, you know, very clean. <laughs> uh, let's see. I went to Jupiter Donuts, as is tradition. I got a raspberry swirl, you know, a little filled raspberry donut action. I got a sticky bun, and then they had cherry turnovers. So I was like, yeah, let me get one of them. So yes, very yummy, very yummy. Um, Let's see here. Other than that, nothing too wild to report. You know, just another day in the life. We're chilling on this nice Saturday. I feel like we're, we're, we're really in the fall times. You know what I mean? I'm thinking we're no more flash spikes of heat or anything like that we're done you know hopefully we're we're, we're done clocking record heats <laughs> um because man i'm over sweating i'm so over sweating it's nice to just like wear clothes again <laughs> maybe even a nice pant <laughs> okay let me do my little uh you know start up and then we'll get into this All right. Uh, first article is from Politico. TikTok hit with 345 million pound fine. It feels weird coming out of my mouth uh, for violating children's privacy. I know it's a lot more, though, than, you know, the old U.S. dollar. So, you know, it's a WAPA. All right. Uh, booming social media application TikTok needs to pay up in Europe for, a vi- for violating children's privacy. The popular Chinese-owned app failed to protect children's personal information by making their accounts publicly accessible by default and insufficiently insufficiently tackled risks that under 13-year-old users uh, could access this platform. The Irish Data Protection Commission, or the DPC, said in a decision on Friday... The regulator slapped TikTok with a 345 million dollar I did it I was trying to avoid it <laughs> 345 million pound fine for breaching the EU's landmark privacy law uh, the general data protection regulation or the GDPR so yeah they're really getting stuck up here the Irish privacy regulator said that in a period from July to December of 2020 TikTok had unlawfully made accounts of users uh, age 13 to 17 public by default, effectively making it possible for anyone to watch and comment videos they posted. The company also did not appropriately assess the risk that users under the age of 13 could gain access to its platform. It also found TikTok is still pushing teenagers joining the platform to make their accounts and videos public through manipulative pop-ups. The regulator ordered the firm to change these misleading designs known as dark patterns within the next three months. Um, so yeah, we talked about dark patterns before uh, with Amazon. Essentially, it's kind of the thing where they, they kind of pose you with a prompt and you go, oh, I don't want this, but it seems like I can't really get out of it. What do I press? What do I do? And you go and you maybe press anyway and it leads you further into uh, potentially subscribing or doing a thing. And that's kind of what these dark patterns are. And essentially in TikTok, they're trying to get you to be like, yeah, just go ahead and do this. And I've seen it even in my limited interaction with TikTok. Uh, a lot of times they want me to turn on notifications and I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Cause I've done that before. And then you guys flood the zone and I'm just getting so much notifications about so much fucking nonsense just to hit a K hole for like 30 minutes to an hour. I don't want to get on this thing. No. So I just turn it off and I keep it off. Um, but that is one of those things where I do kind of struggle with this, right? Because every person, no matter how old you are, like you are entering this portal when you go onto these apps and you do these things. And I do understand and respect that, like, look, when you have a kid, like, you have to, like, have these protections available. Otherwise, you know, things can go rampant. And especially they go on to, you know, say, hey, the pairing up of, like, minors to adults, like, that's a bad scene. It's a bad sign. 
But I'm also like, yeah, that's the internet. Like, the internet is crazy. Like, if you don't have any kind of parental supervision here, yes, this is an inevitable conclusion that you are leading to. So I, I, I don't know. I, I get that why, you know, the DPC is cracking down here, why they're making a, a thing. Also, I mean, you know, I, I hear $345 million, million pounds, um, and that's a lot of money. But I believe Facebook, they got fined up to like the billions for some shit before. So, I mean, European, uh, you know, Europe doesn't play shit. Some news I'm kind of leaving on the floor here. I'm going to maybe kind of use it to segue a little bit. But even iPhone had to straighten up and ship out, right? Because they had to upgrade, I believe, their ports for their chargers. So now they can't really keep making the lightning port thing. They have to have a just a universal type C. So that's why I think the iPhone 15 is going to be you know, hitting different a little bit, at least in that regard. But essentially, that's just them milking money for, you know, aesthetics. You know, you have to now pay for this extra ass fucking thing. And the UK is like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> like, we shouldn't have to pay for this. Our customers shouldn't have to pay for this. You should just have a universal support. Why don't you fucking do that? Um, and on that, I fucking agree. And I also get, like I said on this, I, I agree that it's like, look, you have holes in your system here. You should be fixing them. Now, TikTok has said, hey, the things you're trying to call us out for, we've already like fixed. Uh, you know, we, we have been working with you guys. We think this fine's a bit much. But, you know, this is a big corporation. You know, they can handle it. They, like, they literally aren't even the top three like on this like hit list that they're describing on Politico. You know, they land around, uh, they're, they're under Meta and Amazon in terms of getting dinged for fines. So, hold on, what does it say for, I'm curious what Amazon's was, uh, at least in amount. Ooh, that's a pretty good amount. Four, or 746, uh, 100 pounds, 100,000 pounds. Yeah, Jesus Christ, y'all know I'm bad with numbers. Um, okay, yeah, and then they go into the whole, like, you know, China, China, China part um y'all know that's a thing we've talked about that part that aspect but yeah tiktok's in the news again uh let's talk about some other things though let's talk about some mexico u.s relations uh associated press u.s mexico extradites o ovidio guzman lopez son of sinaloa cartel leader el chapo to the united states so the mouse is back in the news. Uh, that is his nickname, by the way. Uh, Mexico extradited Olivia. Oh, I'm gonna keep this fucking shit up. Oh, Ovidio, Ovidio, Ovidio Guzman Lopez, a son of former Sinaloa cartel leader Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, to the United States on Friday to face drug trafficking money laundering and other charges. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland said in a statement. This action is the most recent step in the Justice Department's effort to attack every aspect of the cartel's operation, Garland said. The Mexican government did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is on this big crackdown to be like, look, fentanyl, 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 whatever, is a huge problem. You know, it has become the end all, like, you know, cheapest option for people to, you know, get high. It's literally now cheaper than heroin and you know it, it's killing people it, it is a very nasty terrible fucking thing um so on this premise they're like look dude we gotta fucking crack down on every cartel everyone responsible from mexico to china we gotta get everybody involved and we gotta shut it all down and you know the war on drugs fucking continues so you know here we are this is their second crack at this man more or less i mean i feel like they push mexico into this situation of like look Y'all need to crack on, crack down on this, or we'll literally send people, we'll literally invade with an army, which is like, that's, that's crazy to even make that notion. That's crazy that there are conservatives in our country here in, in America that have, have boldly said this shit. Uh, I believe Vivek has said it, DeSantis has said it on the campaign trail. Like, these people are maniacs. Like, please understand that, like, the average American does not think about this shit, and, and if they did, they do not think about it in these parameters. They don't want to, people want to go to Mexico to chill, bro. That's what we want. That's what we always wanted. <laughs> Sadly, this border shit just makes it even more annoying. Um, but, um, that being said, we got him on the second time, I guess. Well, Mexico got him, and now we want him. Because we want the symbolism slam dunk and, you know, we think we can crack a case here. So, you know, the extradition process has kind of been fast tracked and that's kind of a surprise. But, you know, once again, it's like they had to mention it here. Uh, there's a guy like Mike Vigil or whatever. Um, he's like, yeah, like 
people have been rattling the saber about, hey, we're going to invade Mexico, so we got to do something. And they're like, fine, yeah, just have them. Just fucking take them. But at the end of the day, does this do anything? No. There's still fentanyl in the streets. Like, cartels are still operating at a high capacity. This is just a guy. It's just a guy. Like, he's just a son. Like, at the end of the day, like, you know, he does shit and, you know, looks cool and dapper or whatever, but he's a replaceable person. Everyone from top to bottom on this thing is, is replaceable because at the end of the day, people want what? They want drugs. They're not going to stop people from getting drugs. I'm sorry. You just won't. Um, so, yeah. I mean, the, we could get deeper in that conversation, but it's a whole other podcast. And I got to talk about a cult. I got shit to do today. So, you know, <laughs> we can move along. But that's something that has developed here in the news. I guess he's coming to the States. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I want to talk about there. Um, let's see. From NBC News. Six Soldiers of Christ, Ooh, you know I love that, you know we're talking about something deep. Six Soldiers of Christ charged with murder after woman found dead in trunk, police say. All right. Five adults and a juvenile have been charged with murder after a 70-pound woman who had been beaten and malnourished for weeks was discovered dead in the trunk of a vehicle this week, police said in Georgia um, Thursday. The victim, who is not publicly identified, is from South Korea and came to the U.S. this summer to join a religious group. Um, but what she found? Nothing but trouble. The accused individuals referred to themselves as belonging to Soldiers of Christ. The cause of death remains under investigation. Police said the medical examiner's office believes malnourishment could be a contributing factor. Uh, arrest warrants indicate the woman had been starved and beaten for weeks. Police believe the starvation began August 3rd. It was not immediately clear when she died. Um, also, yeah, I know, I'm terrible. I should have done a trigger warning, realizing that now. Um, Eric Hunt, 26 years old, of Swanee, Georgia, and Guam Lee, 26, jo- jo- Joan Ho Lee, 26, Joan Hoon Lee, 22, Hunji Lee, 25, all from Lawrenceville, Georgia, were all charged with felony murder, false imprisonment, tampering with evidence, and concealing the death of, uh, of another, police said. The 15-year-old was also charged, but not named. Um, so, yeah, I wish I had, like, more information, more details on, like, what the cult was about, what were they doing, maybe that's going to come out, but, um, Hun had parked the car, uh, Thursday at a business in Duluth, uh, that advertises services for Korean spas, but, um, then he, like, the business wasn't connected, but then he went to the hospital in Atlanta for unrelated injuries, but he had a family relative go, oh, they need, I need something from the car. Can you go get it? And I guess in the process of doing that, they checked the trunk and they realized there's a whole body in there. So they called the police. So that's where we're at now. Uh, detectives, detectives believe the basement of the home was where the crime took place. Um, they got a warrant to search the home in Lawrenceville. Um... But yeah, I mean, so far, that's just kind of, we're, we're just touching the surface here of this dark thing. Uh, hopefully, I get some more details there. But I was like, oh my, my, another cult and a body in the trunk. So, um, you know, that got my attention. Okay, we have one more thing to cover, and then I'll let you skedaddle on to your nice, lovely Saturday, I hope, I pray. Um, but you know me, I'm taking my little break. So go ahead and take your little break with me. Hopefully you do. I really, that's, that would be my favorite part. I love that we, we would have a little kumbaya, if you will. A little fireside chat, you know, really keep it a hundred. Put your 3D glasses on, if you know what I mean. Okay, our last story is from The Independent. Democrat running in Virginia election has online sex videos exposed. Illegal invasion of my privacy. A Democratic candidate running for the Virginia General Assembly has condemned reports that she has performed on 
a pornographic website with her husband while asking viewers for tips in return for carrying out specific sex acts. Susanna Gibson, 40 years old, a first time candidate in a high stakes race for a seat in the House of Delegates, issued a statement on Monday calling the exposure of the videos the worst gutter politics and an illegal evasion of my privacy designed to humiliate me and my family. It won't, it won't intimidate me and it won't silence me, the nurse practitioner wrote in a statement to the Washington Post. My political opponents and their Republican allies have proven they're willing to commit a sex crime to attack me and my family because there's no line they won't cross to silence women when they speak up. Um, the, uh, the statement comes after the Post and the Associated Press reported the videos of the live streamed online sexual activity from one pornographic site, uh, which was Chatterbait. Um, it was archived archived on another site, which was, I think, Recurbate. I guess it's like, I don't know if this is like a condoned thing or not, but they're archived live streams or clips like of Chatterbait. I kind of imagine how like, you know, Twitch has, you know, live stream when you can have clips, but sometimes those clips or, you know, whatever get moved to like live stream fail or whatever. Uh, I'm trying to maybe just throw some comparisons out. Um, but yeah, this is obviously just a very just gross thing to do is essentially the, the I believe the post said they I think they might have been the first to report it. But um, they got this from like a, uh, an anonymous Republican like person. And I believe that like the general I don't know if the, the post was saying this or it was, this was like on some kind of radio thing or whatever. But they're like, oh, the problem is and what people are trying to like portray. I think the Daily Wire even got in on this. But essentially, they're like, well, you're not even allowed uh, as, a, uh, you know, in regards to Chatterbait's terms of service to ask for tips. It is not condoned. You could potentially, I think, lose your site or, you know, your account access if you do this. Uh, essentially, though, they're doing that so that they protect their own ass legally, saying like, hey, we are not advocating anyone doing any kind of sex work for money here. It's not what we're doing. They have to do that legally to protect their own fucking ass. So that's what's happening. And at the end of the day... Uh, Gibson and her husband, you know, are doing this, they're, they're, they're having, they're doing acts, um, and, you know, they say, hey, you know, if you would like to go to, like, a more private thing or whatever, you know, you can tip, you can do this and that, and that's all they're doing, and essentially, they're trying to hone in on that, you know, these Republican talking heads, you know, any kind of potential articles, even, I'm not really necessarily saying Associated Press is doing that, but I imagine they talked about it or whatever, but essentially, they're trying to say that this is a bad thing. You can't do that. But I really do feel like they want to just draw attention to this and be like, look at this person having sex. Look at this person doing immoral things for money. Oh, my gosh. The scandal. Ah. And I think that's fucked up. I think that's cruel. I think it's unusual to do. Um, there's also a law against it in Virginia. So, um, you know, it's like a revenge porn law. So you just literally legally can't do it. So there's potentially that at play here. Um, but yeah, I, I do think it's fucked up. Um, I guess I can read a little bit more portions here. The report, uh, the videos reportedly show Miss Gibson and her husband, John David Gibson, having sex and then pausing to ask viewers for donations called tips or tokens to watch a private show or see specific sex acts carried out. Um, they say that they are raising the money uh, for a good cause. Honestly, who cares what they're raising for? I don't. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think. Here's the law. Yeah, Miss Gibson's attorney Daniel P. Watkins told the Post that disseminating the videos is a violation of Virginia's revenge porn law, which makes it a crime to maliciously disseminate or sell nude or sexual images of another person with the intent to coerce, harass, or intimidate. It's illegal and it's disgusting to disseminate this kind of material and we're working closely with the FBI and local prosecutors to bring wrongdoers to justice, Mr. Walking said. So yeah, I mean, get your bread on that, hopefully, and I hope she wins. I know she's going up against Republican businessman David Owen. Uh, she has said that it was the U.S. Supreme Court's 2022 decision overturning Roe v. Wade that propelled her. 
Uh, also, I don't know if I mentioned it. Uh, she's a nurse practitioner. That's her profession. Uh, she did win her primary. So she's been putting in the work. This is someone who was inspired and made it happen. And I feel like this is in a terrible way of mudslinging to try to sit there and say, oh, like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You had sex. You had sex on camera. You're so bad. And it's like, I guarantee you more than half the motherfuckers who are like crying about this, bang for blood over this shit, were eagerly watching. Eagerly watching, if you know what I mean, bro. Like, I, I just, I, I think this shit is just lousy. And, you know, we're rooting for you, Miss Gibson. Go, go for it. Go off. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. That's the episode today. Um, I got, I got a shill. I got to, you know, get my two cents, hopefully, if you'd like, if would you kindly. Uh, Patreon.com slash Isaiah News. If you'd like to support the effort, you do become a newsy. I shout you out on the podcast, top of the month. I say your name, plug a project, thing you're on. And then also free ways to hit me up, news one at gmail.com. I'm on all of the socials as well as the podcast. If you'd like to follow along, comment, chit chat, what have you. Uh, let's see here. If you'd really like to support as well for free, uh, subscribe to the YouTube. Thumbs up on the episodes. The comments mean a lot. They do a lot. Hopefully they're positive comments. Please don't be rude. That'd be weird. That'd be so cringe. Uh, but yeah, that, that all the reviews. Max out those stars for me, please. Follow me on all of the socials. That means a lot. It does a lot of effort. Uh, even like the ones you're listening on. I mean like Spotify, Apple. You know, if there's a button to push, you push that for me. Please push my buttons digitally <laughs> not emotionally please don't do that okay but yeah that's it uh thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for being a friend and hopefully i see you soon for some more good news i love you bye